Hey everyone, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake and today on my YouTube channel I'm going to talk to you about the best laptops you can get for graphic design. Now initially without specifying Apple or Windows based laptops, I'm going to get into the type of specs that you need for a solid graphic design laptop and how you're going to be using it. So I'm going to cover things like how much RAM, what type of hard drive speeds you need, processing power, etc. Because I think it's important to cover these when making your decision about what the best laptop is, rather than focusing on the features of specific brands. But I am going to get into those brands and recommend some different brands just based on experience, recommendations that I've had from other graphic designers, and just their overall specs and capabilities. So look forward to that further along in the video and also in the links in the description below. So let's start out with how you're going to be using your graphic design laptop. If you're not going to be doing very intensive graphic design work like 24 by 36 print posters or things like that, you're going to be doing something more along the lines of banner advertisements, um, flyers, 8.5 by 11 pages, etc. Then you can actually scale down your requirements for it as follows. For this type of work, you don't need a laptop that costs probably more than $600. In truth, if you're a more technically inclined person, you can buy a $300 to $400 laptop, and then you could just soup it up with modifications by increasing the RAM, putting in SSD hard drive in the optical bay, etc. So again, you don't have to spend a lot of money to be able to have a solid graphic design machine. You just have to know what you're doing and know what specs to look for, and I'm going to help you out with that in just a moment. So there are four major components that you need to consider in a graphic design machine, regardless of whether it's a desktop or a laptop. And that's the processing power, the RAM, the hard drives, and the video graphics card or GPU. These four components more than anything else will dictate the overall performance of your machine. And this is especially true in terms of your laptop. So let's get into processors. Most laptops nowadays are coming with either dual core or quad core. Quad core is becoming more and more mainstream now, and I don't really think that single core laptops even really exist anymore, even within the netbook community. So um, that's something to think about, whether you wanna go with a dual core and save some money, or a quad core and have increased performance. Regardless of what choice you use, you should make sure that you get a laptop that has at least 2.0 gigahertz in terms of the processing speed. And if you can, go higher. If you can get something like 2.5 to 2.7, I highly recommend that. Most of the MacBooks um, are doing roughly that amount. I know that all of the um, Toshiba Cosmio X series are doing um, at least 2.4. So just think about that when you're buying a laptop because the processing power is going to determine how fast you can do a lot of things. Renders, saves, working with multiple files. It's going to be very important. I would say it's probably the most important part of the performance of your laptop aside from RAM. With regard to RAM, unless you're doing some really basic photo editing or you're doing mostly web graphics, I don't think you can even get away with four gigs of RAM anymore. Um, I've done that in the past when that was just the more prevalent amount of RAM that was allotted in laptops and it just was not a fun time waiting forever for images to render or not having real-time drawing with regard to things like um, the blur and smudge tools that I use in my digital artwork. So if you're going to be doing heavy photo manipulation, then I really think you just need to um, have eight gigabytes as a base for your RAM. If you're only going to be doing things like typography and page layout based design, then you could probably get away with four to six gigs of RAM. But again, my recommendation is start with eight gigs as a minimum. Preferably you want 16 gigs if you can get it, or if you have a little more money, like maybe $1,800, you can get Toshiba laptops that have up to 32 gigs of RAM. Or um, if you have a little more money than that, you can get the HP um, Z notebooks. They actually go up to 32 gigs of RAM as well. So again, the more RAM you have, as you know, Photoshop is extraordinarily RAM intensive. And so are a lot of other programs within the Adobe Creative Suite. But Photoshop, After Effects, and Premiere are probably the most resource intensive out of all of them. So if you're primarily going to be working in those applications, really max out the RAM as much as you can in your laptop. To my knowledge, the maximum cap for um, RAM in laptops and Apple uh, notebooks are 16 gigs of RAM. Now, if you are an Apple notebook user, then you can confirm or deny that. But everything that I've read indicates that you can't go past 16 gigs. So if somebody knows different, please let us know in the comments below. 
The next most important thing, at least in my opinion, is your hard drives. Typically, laptops come with 5400 RPM hard drives if they don't come with solid state drives. So that's something that you really need to think about is which direction you're gonna go. Are you gonna go with a traditional hard drive with a lower speed and uh, mechanical moving parts, or are you gonna go with an SSD drive, in which case you're gonna be paying more and have less storage, but have higher overall speeds and performance and write times, or are you gonna go with a hybrid solution? The other thing to consider is how many hard drives you're going to have. Now, as you may or may not know, Photoshop can actually take advantage of multiple hard drives, but more importantly, having multiple hard drives means that you're splitting up the usage of internal bandwidth and read-write. So if you can take out the optical drive bay and putting an SSD drive, then that's gonna be ideal. Or if you buy a laptop that actually comes with two hard drive slots already, then you can get a maximum of three internal hard drives and you can always use an external for your fourth. So that's just my recommendation on how you approach hard drives. Faster hard drives are better. So if you can get hybrid hard drives or SSD hard drives, they're a little more expensive, but they're definitely worth it. And they'll probably last you longer because they don't have the internal moving parts, at least where the SSDs are concerned. In terms of overall hard drive space, with regard to your data hard drives, I recommend 500 to a terabyte. Um, you're going to have a lot of files in Photoshop that are gonna get very big if you're doing print work or if you're doing any type of uh, video editing, even for YouTube. You, your files are going to get big and if you have a lot of them and if you're not archiving them on a larger external hard drive, then that could be problematic and you'll have to choose between keeping and deleting things and you just don't wanna do that. So better, bigger hard drives are in fact better. Finally, let's talk about graphics cards. This is one of the more confusing things for graphic designers who are looking for computers in general because um, the, up until now, there's been a lot of misinformation about this that just a better graphics card or a gaming rig is the way to go if you're a graphic designer. And while some of that is partially true, graphic design programs and applications, particularly the Adobe suite, use um, video graphics very differently than games do. So when you're getting a video graphics card, there's a couple of things you want to consider. Yes, the virtual memory is important. So yeah, if you can get something that's two gigs, three gigs, four gigs, that is better. But those are specs that are marketed to gamers because that actually affects uh, the game functionality and those renders a little differently than when we're doing graphic design stuff. The more important thing is the overall internal bandwidth with regard to the video card and also the bit size. You want a 256-bit video card if you can get it. Only settle for a 128-bit if uh, you can't get the 256. My recommendations for these video cards are, even in a laptop, if you can get something with NVIDIA, that is what I would prefer because I prefer things based on the Intel chipset. This is also what you're gonna find inside of Apple laptops. So I prefer the NVIDIA cards. Um, anything from the current series is more than likely going to be fine. But just make sure that it's at least a one gig dedicated video, two gig if you can get it. If you can get more like you can in the Toshiba Cosmio series, um, then that's great. Let's talk about some of the other little things. Um, I recommend getting laptops that have uh, full keyboards. And the reason I recommend this is because this is gonna be better for you as a graphic designer with how you actually use your programs and your shortcuts. So getting a full keyboard is better. And if you can get a chiclet keyboard, that's probably gonna be what's best for you as a designer with regard to ergonomics. As for displays, um, for you Mac guys, I actually recommend right now holding off the Mac Pro with Retina display. And that's not because I'm getting ready to bash uh, Macs or anything like that, but the reason is because of 4K uh, display. Now, if you're not ever going to get into video editing, video production, or motion graphics as a designer, then that's fine. But I would recommend just holding out for Apple to release its 4K display technology before investing in something that much. Because once you invest in an Apple laptop, you're going to probably want to stick with it for at least three to five years, probably more if it lasts that long. So before you make that kind of commitment to Retina technology, I highly recommend waiting for the 4K technology because I don't think it's that far behind. For everyone else, just make sure that you're getting a good display and that you're comfortable with it. Um, and you may wanna look into getting an external color calibrator so that you can color calibrate your monitor, particularly if you're working with print work. If you're using an Apple laptop, then you probably won't need any color calibration because it actually works very effectively with regard to um, handling that for print design and CMYK and displays the colors very well and it's very easy on the eyes. So again, 
I highly recommend that you make sure you invest in a monitor that you can live with. And I would say make sure that it has at least full HD quality in terms of uh, 1080p. Finally, brand recommendations for laptops. Now in the description below, I'm actually gonna highlight specific laptops and price points so that whether you're going on the lower end, the medium end, or the high end, there's an appropriate recommendation for you. But for the moment, I'm going to quickly and briefly talk about brands. I'm gonna start with Windows since Apple is completely separate. Now again, some of this is based on experience. Some of this is based on recommendations from other designers that I respect. And um, a lot of this is based on very intensive overall research. So um, the main laptop series that I'm gonna recommend are the Toshiba Cosmia laptops. Now I wasn't always a fan of Toshiba, but that was because my experience was with buying lower end Toshiba laptops. And this was actually several years ago as well. So I really think that they've made um, a lot of strides for improvement as a company. The Toshiba uh, Cosmio series is very great for video editing and graphic design work because of the fact that you can have multiple internal hard drives, you can swap out for a third hard drive with regard to the optical drive, and the fact that they come with 16 gig configurations right out the bat, a three gig video card from NVIDIA, and the fact that you uh, can go up to 32 gigs of RAM on some of their models. And you can even do this at a 17 inch size for under $2,000, which in terms of specs, power, and pricing blows Mac out of the water if you don't care about the retina display. And the displays on these Toshiba laptops are actually pretty good. Next, I'm gonna recommend Asus. The current laptop that I use is actually an Asus laptop that I heavily modified myself. Um, and this is great because it allows you to do things within a very flexible price point. Asus has a lot of different laptops out there and you can get something that either fits your needs right out of the box or something that you know you can build on. Asus has been um, a staple in terms of brands that gamers recommend because gamers beat the hell out of their computers in terms of utilization. Graphic designers are probably the only people who beat their computers up as much as gamers do. So a lot of gamers I know um, that build their own machines use a lot of Asus components and they use their motherboards. Also, you have to remember that with regard to um, Google, Google actually has used Asus as a hardware vendor as well. So that's a really stunning endorsement as far as I'm concerned. So Asus is affordable, solid, reliable, and I highly recommend it. Dell. Now I know what some of you are thinking and you know, I was right there with you a couple of years ago. Dell laptops are actually a fairly decent solution for graphic designers because of the different price points, uh, the displays that they actually make and the fact that they are somewhat more upgradable. But as far as a solid graphic design or even video editing solution, Dell laptops actually work very well. Um, I've actually messed around with my friend Samantha Merrill's laptop when we were doing some video editing projects together and I screwed around a little bit in Photoshop with it and I never ran into any problems on anything we ever worked on. The performance and the speed were great and it was just a decent overall experience that I've had with regard to any other laptop I've used, whether it's been an Apple, an Asus, or even a Toshiba. So again, uh, give uh, Dell another shot if you had a bad experience with them in the past. And Sam, I really hope you appreciate me giving you yet another shout out on my YouTube channel. Finally, Apple laptops. Now, this kind of goes without saying, but Apple is a solid solution if you are a graphic designer. The price point is a little bit heavier, but it is um, what you might call a premium product or a luxury product in a way, because you ultimately don't need it. You don't need all the aesthetic value. You don't need the cleanness of the interface, but those things are nice to have. And so you're gonna pay a little bit more for them, just like everything else that's quote unquote nice to have. So in that regard, there are a couple of things to consider if you do choose to get an Apple laptop and which ones that you should um, think about getting. You have a couple of different choices with regard to an Apple laptop. You can get a MacBook Air, you can get a MacBook Pro, or you can get a MacBook Pro with Retina display. Now, which one you choose is going to depend on how you're using it and your overall needs and capabilities, just like any other piece of graphic design hardware that you'd be getting. If you're a studio-based designer that's constantly on the go and you know that you're just doing something right now and that you're gonna do your primary work back at the office or back at home on your desktop, then the MacBook Air is fine, but I do recommend um, getting the larger model with the 15-inch screen just in terms of the display and layout capabilities and also full screen for any video. There are limitations with the MacBook Air, um, such as the maximum RAM cap, uh, the hard drive space since it uses an SSD drive exclusively, 
and the fact that the battery is not replaceable by you. You'd have to send it uh, to the Apple store. So these are just some things that you may want to consider if you're thinking about getting a MacBook Air. Overall, for the price of the MacBook Air, I would say just go ahead and get a MacBook Pro. It's going to have a longer overall battery life. The battery is replaceable. Um, it's a solid product. It's got much higher performance specs and it can be upgraded within the limitations that any other Apple product can be upgraded. You're gonna have a lot more overall hard drive space and you do have the ability to take out the optical drive in favor of an SSD hard drive. With the MacBook Air, you don't even get an optical drive. With the MacBook Pro, at least you have an optical drive that you can replace with an SSD hard drive if you want to expand the space or the performance. Between the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Pro with Retina display, I would say get the MacBook Pro and hold out until the Retina display technology moves into the 4K arena. If you don't care about the overall video quality or those kind of display things, then save some money and just go ahead and get the MacBook Pro. Whatever hardware you buy as a graphic designer is going to be an investment in your overall craft, your profession, and an investment in you personally. So you should only get something that you feel really comfortable with and that you're going to enjoy using for the next three to five years because ideally that's how long it's going to last. Remember to take the needs of your projects into consideration and the type of work you're going to do when you're choosing your graph design hardware, whether it be a laptop or a desktop. Anyway, I do have some recommendations to specific laptop models in the description below. I know a lot of you guys have asked about my uh, opinion on graphic design laptops, so I'm happy to finally get around to doing this video for you. And um, I really appreciate you guys reaching out to me in the comments and asking me questions, but it was just simpler to do this video. That being said, if you do still have questions or if you have some recommendations yourself as a graphic designer for laptops that people should take a look at or things that they should keep in mind when choosing um, their laptop specs, then please leave those in the comments below. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm probably gonna do a few more videos this week about um, graphic design hardware specifications, different tools graphic designers use. I'll probably do a video specifically on drawing tablets, so stay tuned for that. As always, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Watch the other videos on my channel. And again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.